good afternoon. Welcome to church. It's good to have you with us. If you're watching online, it's good to have you there as well. We're going to sing the first song that comes up on the screen, The Greatest Day in History. Death is beaten. You have won the day. So if you're able to stand, then please do so. If you want to sit, that's okay. But let's sing this, this song today. one to wake you up with on a Sunday afternoon. Let's have a, a prayer and ask for, for God's blessing this afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you that when the Lord Jesus went to Calvary on the greatest day in history, our historians would tell us there are many days in history, but this specific day in history changed the world forever. When the Lord Jesus went and gave his life that we may have salvation and an eternity fulfilled and restored. So, Father, we thank you for our Lord Jesus. We thank you for all that he means to us, all that he's done for us, and all that he'll do for us in the future. Father, bless us as we are together this morning. 
be with those who can't make it out. We just pray a blessing on them too. And for those who are watching at home, we just really ask that they would benefit from joining with us today at the service. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Now we're going to do something slightly differently this week. And uh, instead of a video, we're going to do a quiz because we, uh, we like change. So let's have a light bulb moment. So we've got two, four, five, five there, far too many at this side. So the middle and the right hand side, you can join sides and the really intelligent people over here can uh, fight for yourselves. Okay, so a light bulb moment, I have a very glamorous assistant. And like all good quizzes, there is a prize. Now it's not a holiday in the Bahamas for three weeks, all expensive paid. Uh, you will enjoy a packet of Haribos. So, you have to, you want them to join you, that would be an advantage? Yes, it would. Okay, so, I will need to have 360 degree peripheral vision. Okay, so let's get our thinking caps on. And as a famous Belgian detective said, it is the brain the little gray cells on which we must rely. So, I want you to use your little gray cells. That's a rubbish Belgian accent. But everybody thinks he's French and that's my best French accent. So, we're gonna be like Poirot. So, we will start with the cost of a coin. You're right, well done. This side can start. <laughs> okay, so, we used to play a game years and years ago called Dingbats. So, you'll see something up on the screen, and I want you to tell me, but, um, I want you to tell me what the biblical dingbat is. Oh, it's getting serious now, they're coming away from the, from our instruments. So this side, I'm gonna start now. If you shout out, and I don't pick you, you may give the answer to someone else, and you forfeit the chance to win the prize, okay? So it's gonna be on this side. So here we go, here's the first one. What is that famous biblical saying? Don't shout it out, okay? So it says, forgive and forget. Forgives, forgets, forgive and forget. I told you, you have to use the little gray cells. Okay, so my glamorous assistant will take a packet of sweets all to herself. Okay? She picks the ones that she likes. Okay, so this side, you get the idea? Here we go. We ready? Here's the next one. Okay, you shout it out, Linda. The Ark of the Covenant. So there we go. So the covenant is an ark. So the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. So if you shout out somebody who maybe didn't quite get it, right? Okay, just excitement is taking over. Okay. So oh, you'll need to find out. Oh, at the end of the quiz, I've made them particularly easy. I thought. Okay, this side. Okay. Oh, okay, Lynn. The coat of many colours. So we went to see Joseph during the week in the Kings and he had his coat of many colours. That's the story of Joseph and it was fantastic. And I'm very grateful to my children for suggesting that we should all go because it was a great night. Okay, this side again, here we go. Now this is what a lot of people sometimes Okay, I want you to put your hand up. Woe to me is not quite the right answer. That's not. Oh, now, oh, if it was on catchphrase, I would be handing it over to somebody else and you'd be frozen out. Oh. Woe, Lynn, are you going? Woe is me. Woe equals me, so woe is me. I thought this was quite easy, but... Uh, yeah. We're making it sound particularly hard, okay? So, we'll go back to this side for your next question. Okay, okay, shh, okay. Esther, high priest, there we go. So, that was, there we go. Now, I can't remember what order I put them in, right? So, 
please don't challenge me to say that that sounds easier ones than us, right? Okay. Okay. Now, I need to get it specifically, Graham. The parting of the Red Sea. There we are. Good. That's a side got one packet. <laughs> okay. So that was your side. So back to this side. Here we go. Okay. Ruth, have you got your hand up to answer? Kate, the tree of life. That's right, well done. You take a packet for yourself, beautiful assistant. Okay, the tree of life, one of the trees in the Garden of Eden. So, the, back to this side. Okay, now, again, specifically, Hannah. Yes, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Okay, forever and ever. And that was the last one. There we go. I didn't know how many I had done. So, there was eight all together. How many did this side get? Three. So, that means that this side must have got five. So, this side is the, are, are the winners. Okay. So, as I said, I thought they were quite easy. I might, I might have to scrutinize what ones I give you uh, for the next time we do it. Just something a wee bit different uh, than what we've done in the past. Uh, we might have a video next week. Um, we might have another, another go at it next week. So uh, thank you for participating, everybody. I could see the joy in people's faces there. It was quite, uh, quite intense there, actually, for, uh, for joining in. So thank you, everybody, for, for doing that. more songs the next one rejoice rejoice Christ is in you the hope of glory in our hearts as I said you were smiling when we were playing 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 that quiz and uh, let's hope you can smile as we sing the rest of the songs rejoice rejoice Christ is in you Rejoice, rejoice, Christ is in you. Listen, the hope of glory in our hearts. He lives, he lives, his breath is in you. Arise, the mighty army, we arise. Now is the time for us to march upon the last into our hands. He will give 
standing or you can take your seats. This was a request and the person who asked for it said to me this morning, are we doing deep and wide? I said, yes, we are. So if you're standing, you need to do the actions. Okay, so deep. <laughs> okay, if you don't know what the actions are, then my glamorous assistant will show you what the actions are. Deep, deep and wide. Come on, Kate. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Hallelujah, for it's deep and wide. Deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. So plunge, plunge right in, lose your sin. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Hallelujah, so plunge right in, lose your sin. There's a fountain flowing deep and wide. Okay, so we may just do those two verses because sometimes when I take the words out, I get it wrong. <laughs> so I don't want to embarrass myself. So let's try it. <clears throat> we'll, we'll do it slow. We'll do them both through twice and we'll speed it up the second time. everyone for taking part there last one and then uh, boys and girls can go next door and downstairs light of the world you step down into darkness open my eyes let me see <clears throat>
glad that everyone's kind of spread out over the church when the children go out it certainly uh, takes a great percentage of the, the population away so we started last week with uh, the first in a three-part series from Roger Carswell who's a friend of my brother-in-law Ian uh, down in Leeds and Roger was one of the lecturers when Ian was at Bible uh, College and uh, Ian has uh, stayed friends with him in the couple of years that he's been down in Leeds and we're very grateful to, to Roger for doing this little series. So uh, just a nice wee snippet, just about 10 minutes or so, uh, Isaiah 52, uh, if you are here last week, uh, he introduced the book to us and now he's going to, to do the next part in the series. So I hope you enjoy uh, this next um, part of Isaiah 52. We're looking together at a, a marvellous passage in the Bible, written 700 years before Jesus was born by the prophet Isaiah. God is wanting us to understand that the Lord Jesus Christ, who's come into the world, has come as the suffering servant. He's come to die in our place. And God is so keen that humanity should not miss what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. Throughout the centuries before Christ came, God is giving clear indications. He's giving pictures, we call them types and prophecies, and we've got these prophets speaking about Christ. Now, here, Isaiah is telling us in detail about how the suffering servant is dying in our place. He's paying for our sin. Last time, we looked at the servant being presented. That's Isaiah 52, verses 13 to 15. And then the servant profaned. That's Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 3. Now we're going to look at the servant punished. Let's look at verses 4 and 6, the next stanza. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It, it, it's a passage, isn't it, that's so powerful because you get an accumulation of suffering, all sort of crowded into these three verses. We read about his grief, his sorrows. We read that he's wounded. We read that he's bruised. We read that he's smitten. We read about the chastisement that comes upon him. We read about the stripes that he suffered. But the deepest suffering of all is not physical. The deepest suffering is that our sin was laid on Jesus. The sin of the world from the beginning of time to the end of time. God scooped up and sort of focused and forced and funneled on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's there like a magnet attracting everything which is opposite and contrary to him as he carries our sin and pays the penalty for our wrongdoing. He is punished so that we could be forgiven and set free. It's the most wonderful thing that our sin was laid on Jesus. And the moment we ask him to forgive us, ask the risen living Jesus to forgive us, Jesus' righteousness is transferred to us, so we become covered, clothed, if you want, in the goodness of, of Jesus. His goodness is credited to our account as he pays our debt and takes and carries our sin. Now, of course, at the heart of Israel's religious system until the time uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ was uh, the idea of sacrifice, a substitute sacrifice, an innocent animal, say a lamb, would be sacrificed, dying in place of the guilty sinner. So the guilty sinner would lay, say, his hand on the head of the, the lamb that then would die. And it was as if his guilt was transferred to the innocent little lamb. It died and this person went away forgiven. But any thinking Israelite would think, how can a lamb take away my sin? Well, of course, every lamb sacrificed throughout the centuries was, was looking forward to the fact that Jesus would come as the Lamb of God who would die in our place and would take on himself the sin of the world. We read about the Lord Jesus Christ here being wounded. He's wounded as one who is sort of pierced by a sharp sword. But we read about him as well being bruised. He's bruised 
as one would be if one was being stoned to death. So the wounding and the bruising of Jesus were, were two dreadful forms of the forms of, of suffering that Jesus took as he's paying the penalty for our sin. He's punished in our place. Our sins were laid on him and he carried them away. Now that's interesting because in the Old Testament there's, there, we read about the scapegoat. The scapegoat would, 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 uh, would go into the wilderness. There's a famous painting, isn't there, by Holman Hunt of the scapegoat. Google it and you'll see a picture of it. Um, the scapegoat took the sin of the nation away, but the Lord Jesus Christ took the sin of the world and carried it away. He paid for it and he carried it away. He felt the full weight of the affliction that sin brings about on himself and he took it away. We've been shocked, haven't we, by seeing pictures of horrendous war once again on our television screens and in our newspapers and, and people get bound up in the suffering and, and, and it's dreadful. The, significantly, this was not a widespread calamity that the Lord Jesus Christ was sort of caught up in. He is the only victim. He is the Lamb of God who is dying to take away the sin of the world. And the difference between him as the Lamb of God and every other sacrifice is that he is the willing Lamb of God dying in our place. But we must move on to the next stanza. Now the servant is passive. Let's look at it again. This is verses 7 to 9. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people he was stricken, and they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence nor was any deceit in his mouth. Jesus now described as the Lamb. Interestingly, the book of Revelation, the very last book of the Bible in the New Testament, uh, Jesus is described as the Lamb 24 times. He was belittled in life, wasn't he? People hurling abuse at him, people trying to trap him and trip him, etc. But he was brutalised in death. Mm. What he suffered in those hours at Calvary on the cross when he was crucified are beyond anything our mind can fathom and understand. Now, normally, of course, a servant is not permitted to um, to answer back. Uh, they have to submit to their master. Uh, and significantly, in the sufferings of the Lord Jesus Christ, he only spoke when silence would have been taken to disown his kingship. kingship. He... He, he, he's dying, he's suffering, and he's silent. Lambs are incredibly submissive. Um, in Kettlewell, in the Yorkshire Dales, about two, three years ago, there was a horrible uh, picture in the local newspaper of some cruel young, I don't know whether they were shepherds or what, but they'd taken a couple of sheep and they'd suspended them on, on a branch of a tree and they were just beating them to death. Apparently they weren't even breaking the law. But what a wicked thing. But sheep are incredibly submissive. And the Lord Jesus Christ brutalised as he dies there. He embraced the cross. He did so because he, he, he loved his father, of course, and would always want to do his will. I delight to do your will, O God. But he also loved the world. He loved you and me. And he loved lost humanity. And uh, he wanted to be the saviour and the only way sin could be forgiven was for it to be paid for by this willing substitute jesus was cut off cut off from humanity in the way that uh, a tree might be felled or do you remember the story when solomon said about the baby should be cut in half and of course it didn't happen but it was a tremendous act of solomon's wisdom and it's that idea of being cut off um, it's interesting we don't actually read the grim word death until we get to verse 9. That's the first time we read it. Until then, it's all the suffering of the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice a couple of things about verse 9. Um, I, I don't know the Hebrew language, but of course this is written in Hebrew. And I understand the word wicked is singular. Uh, for they made his grave with the wicked. 
okay uh, sorry the word the word wicked sorry is plural he made his his grave with the uh, with the wicked he was crucified between two thieves and then we get the word rich that's the word that's singular but with the rich at his death because he was he he, he died uh, was taken down from the cross and he was buried in a tomb of a rich man joseph of arimathea for 700 750 years these words must have seemed absolutely meaningless but then we have the crucifixion of the lord jesus and he fulfilled all that the prophets had said joseph of arimathea goes to 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 pilate you sort of see him making his way through the jerusalem streets he somehow gets past the security guard that were supposed to be guarding the governor and he begs for the body of the Lord Jesus from Pontius Pilate. And strangely, you wonder why, except he was fulfilling prophecy, Pilate grants his request of him. And there the Lord Jesus Christ is taken to a tomb and there he's buried. We'll see next week. He doesn't stay there, does he? And um, uh, no, the Lord Jesus Christ died once and for all for sin. That's why we need to trust him to forgive us and come and be our saviour and the way he can come and be real to us is because as we'll see next week he not only died but he rose again from the dead who else has done that who else as an innocent one could suffer for the sins of us all who would be big enough to carry the weight of the world's sin on himself only jesus only jesus grateful to Roger for that little insight only Jesus that's what he said right in the very end only through the Lord Jesus Christ can we have our sins forgiven and it is a very simple message very powerful message this afternoon about putting our trust in that one lamb Let's have a prayer as we conclude today's service. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the message of Isaiah 52 regarding the Lord Jesus Christ. The people of the day didn't realize who they was, it was being spoken about. But we are so grateful this afternoon that we know through having the full complement of the scriptures, Old Testament and New Testament, and knowing the story of the Lord Jesus Christ as it's found in the Gospels that he had to go to Calvary there was not one other good enough to pay the price of all of the wrong things that we've done even though we might think oh, it's just a small thing it's still sin and we need to be forgiven for it and if we ask for forgiveness sometimes saying sorry is one of the hardest things we can do and we don't like doing it but if we say sorry to the Lord Jesus Christ for all the things that we've done wrong and truly believe that Jesus will forgive us for it then we can have access into your kingdom Father we thank you for the service today we thank you for the, the boys and girls and for everyone who's here for those who are watching at home those who will watch again Later on, we thank you for the blessing uh, that the YouTube and the, the web have for people to watch at another time. And Father, we really do ask for a blessing upon everyone who will see today's service. And for all of us here, we thank you for it again. Take us home safely now, we pray in your precious name. Amen.